Good afternoon and welcome along to Shine Plus again this afternoon. I hope that you are having a great week. I wonder if I was to add, if I had the power to give you anything uh, you wanted, I wonder what you would ask for. Or if I was to give you three wishes and you could have any three things that you want, I wonder what they would be. While you're thinking about that, I wonder why you would choose whatever it is that you're thinking about. Is it because you think it would make you happy? Uh, it would make you important, maybe more popular, you'd be famous, make you rich? I wonder, would they really make you happy? Would, would they really satisfy you? And if so, how long would they satisfy you for? Today we are thinking about being anchored in God's word and this is something that really will last and endure. We're going to look at the temptation of Jesus. Before we turn to that passage, I would like to give you a little bit of context and a little bit of background before we begin. If you think back to the Old Testament when Moses was around, the guy that God gave the, uh, the Ten Commandments to, the, the person that God chose to lead the Israelites out of Egypt into the wilderness. On this journey, 40 year journey in the wilderness, the Israelites failed to trust God and they were continually turned against him and rebelled against God. The temptation of Jesus has a certain parallel with this event. As Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. However, Jesus succeeded by resisting temptation from the devil and continued to follow and trust in God. And we are going to think and consider how he was able to do this. So I would like you to get your Bibles and turn to the temptation of Jesus, which can be found in Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. While you are looking that up, I'm going to put my teacher's hat on for a little second. I'm sure before you have done uh, an exam, your teacher or an adult has maybe said to you, make sure you read the questions carefully. Read the questions at least twice. I know that I will say to the pupils in my class when we're doing a comprehension or we're studying a passage, make sure you read the passage twice. So I would like you to indulge me this afternoon and read today's passage carefully as you can a couple of times. Before we do that, I would like to pray. And whenever I finish praying, you can hit pause and you can read today's passage. So again, that's Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you love us. And I thank you that you have given us your word. Please still our hearts now. Help us to concentrate and to focus on your word. I thank you that you will speak to us through your word. Please help us to learn more about you and to grow in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Thanks very much for coming back. If we look at today, the temptation of Jesus and we look at that passage in verse 3, uh, the devil tempts Jesus to turn a stone into bread. Now, before we how we think about that, uh, this week you have been looking for a code word. So today's code word is going to be baguette. Baguette. Now, back to the passage. As I said, the first temptation there was to turn a stone into bread. And if we look at Jesus' response in verse 4, Jesus says, man does not live by bread alone. Now there are two things that I would like us to note from this. The first thing, which is the same for each of the three temptations, Jesus immediately knows what the Bible says about, about that. He knows how to make his decision and what it says in the Bible. So that's important for us to be able to, when we have a decision to make, to go and to turn to the Bible to see what does it say I should do. And it's also um, the inspiration there to try to learn what it says in the Bible so that we know immediately what the Bible says, as Jesus did. Secondly, the, the part of the Bible that uh, Jesus refers to is uh, man uh, does not live by bread alone. This can be found in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Uh, verse 3 and this is where again um, it is talking to the Israelites and it is where um, God humbled uh, the Israelites causing them to, to hunger and then feeding them with manna 
uh, to teach them that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So again, whilst as people we need food to live, as Christians we need more than this. We need God's word, the Bible, to help sustain us and help us live and to grow. Second, the second temptation then can be found in verse 6, where the devil promises Jesus authority and splendor if he will worship uh, the devil. Now, again today, the devil will tempt us in the same ways with power and status, uh, with popularity and success. If we turn our back on God and we worship the devil or we follow the ways of the world. But Jesus knows that this will be short-term success at best. It will be short-term uh, happiness at best. So in verse 8, Jesus responds, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Again, this underlines the importance of worshipping the one true God. Today, we, there are lots of idols for us today, whether it's social media, YouTube, YouTubers, fashion, sports, etc. And whilst a lot of these things are very good and very enjoyable, the important thing is to keep our priorities in the right place. And whilst we can enjoy these, we should only be putting our worship and adoration towards the one true God. The final temptation is found in verse 9 and it's a little bit different. Here uh, the devil t says to Jesus, throw yourself down and the angels will surely uh, save you. Jesus' response is, do not put the Lord your God to the test. As I said, this is a little bit of a different one and you might be thinking, well, I never put God uh, to the test. But I wonder, have we ever said to God, God, if you do this for me, then I will do this. Or if you give me this, then I will do the following. It's really important that we need to acknowledge God as our Lord who knows best and trust him. We can't dictate or decide the term saying, if you do this or give me that, then we will do the following. We need to give God the respect he deserves. So just to recap there, first of all, we need to follow God's word, the Bible. Secondly, we need to worship and serve him as the one true God. And thirdly, we are not to test him. We are to accept his authority and give him the respect he deserves. As Christians, the more we read the Bible and pray, the more we will get to know God and understand how to live. We can learn from Jesus' example and learn to successfully resist the devil as Jesus did. Whatever role we have on this earth, as students, at school, in work, whether we're a minister, a youth worker, in business, a teacher or a doctor, no one calling is higher than the next. As long as we are obedient to God and generous with our gifts, we are being faithful disciples. Now, this doesn't mean that we will have an easy life. If we think back to Daniel yesterday, he had to make lots of difficult decisions and it was very difficult for him to stand up for God, not least whenever he was thrown into the, the lion's den. But as we can learn from that, Daniel relied on God and God delivered Daniel. He protected him um, and looked and guided him. Again, another person from the Bible is Joseph. And if you, Joseph in a Technicolored dream coat, and as a young um, boy, he was thrown into, oh, maybe I actually teens that. Uh, I'll just start with Joseph again. Um, another um, person in the Bible is Joseph, and he was thrown into a well and left for dead. But if we know the story of Joseph, he ultimately came to Egypt and he then rose up to become effectively the prime minister. Again, he had lots of difficult decisions to make, but he relied on God and God stuck by him. And finally, if we think about Jesus, who had to endure a lot of persecution when he was here on earth and ultimately dying a horrendous death on the cross. But Jesus, of course, rose from the dead and is with God in heaven. So as Christians, we too share that hope that we know God will be with us and we know that we have that hope of going one day to be in heaven with him. By reading the Bible, it gives us a perspective. It helps us to see things clearly. It helps us to see how amazing God is, how much he loves us, the fact that God's in control, he knows best and he knows what 
he is doing. I'll just uh, like to close here in prayer. Uh, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you uh, for your word and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your example. And I pray that you would help us to learn from your example as when you were tempted in the wilderness by the devil. Lord God, we thank you for uh, the Psalms. And as the psalmist has wrote, talking about uh, your word, he says it is sweeter than honey. We pray that we would learn to understand how amazing your word, the Bible is, that we would learn to read it each day and understand it uh, more um, effectively each day, that we would be able to live our lives for you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Finally, just before you go, I would like to challenge you each day to ask God to give you wisdom and finally to try to read uh, the Bible each day. You can maybe read a psalm or a proverb or maybe choose a book like James. There are also lots of different Bible reading notes available and we will bring those along uh, this evening uh, and show you some of those if you're more interested in reading uh, God's Word each day and using some of those notes. So thank you very much for tuning in again. See you uh, this evening. Thank you.